Thank you. Order. Good evening. Welcome to the uh, October 16, 2023 meeting of Hamden Board of Selectmen. We're being held in the Selectman's office. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are live in the Selectman's office, plus also broadcasting on Zoom. We are recording this meeting. Is there anyone else recording the meeting? And Dalton, I think you already said yes, right? Okay. Uh, pretty soon we'll be able to offer our complete DVD collection of classic selectman meetings. All the greatest hits. All the greatest hits, exactly. In the order now. <laughs> we'll throw in <laughs> conservation meetings or something like something. that. <laughs> Five to six, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. All right, so first on the agenda, that's an amusing interlude. Lauren, you have minutes for us. I do. All right, then. October 2nd. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job, Lauren. Thank you. Double side them next time. Okay. Do you prefer double side them? Yeah, just okay. You know, okay, Bob, give us a quick update on the paradigm. I see we have a contract with a city paradigm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Bernie Lynch is uh, the principal there, and he is is joined the meeting. So. Okay. Bernie. Good evening. Glad to uh, glad to be with you there in Hampton. Uh, also with me is Sharon Flaherty from uh, Community Paradigm, and uh, we're uh, we appreciate you choosing us to uh, help you with this kind of administrative search. Uh, and I guess I'm here tonight to answer any questions you might have as we start to kick off the process, but also sort of walk you through uh, the steps that we see. The proposal that we submitted to you, we provided you with a timeline of um, steps along the way. I'd be happy to walk you through that if you if you, if you you want. I can put that up on the screen, I believe, if uh, I'm allowed to share the screen, but uh, I'll leave that uh, to you as- Hold it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. I can also just talk you through it, if that's easy. Uh, okay, you can share now. Okay. Great. All right. So this is a um, this is the time frame or the timeline that we've we've put together uh, based on uh, I guess you have a town meeting vote coming up to uh, move forward with this uh, process, and uh, we have some commitments that we have to uh, clear up. Uh, but um, you know, when I put this together, I anticipated our introductory meeting would be taking place on uh, the week of uh, October. Um, so what we're really looking at, and I believe that's roughly what you're going to be um, moving to town meeting. The real kickoff to our process is uh, the, what we think is one of the most important steps along the way here is speaking to all, each of you as members of the board. That first step of consultation with the select board that would happen in the week of uh, November 6th uh, is what we, uh, we think is really an important kickoff date. Uh, we'd like to spend time um, by phone or by Zoom uh, to meet with each one of you and find out from you uh, what you're looking for in this position uh, moving forward so that we know who we're, we should be appealing to to uh, recruit to apply for this position. Um, so we're interested, we will be interested in hearing from you about what the issues are facing the town. Uh, we'll also be interested in hearing the the skills and attributes that you think are necessary in order for a town administrator to be successful uh, and have some conversations with you about um, you know, ideas related to uh, compensation, related to um, experience of the candidates, 
uh, all of those ideas and thoughts that you might have that, again, will help us narrow in on the type of individuals that we would be uh, looking forward to bring forward to you as we move through the process. Simultaneous to that, we would be uh, gathering information about the town from your department heads, uh, obviously from Bob, Bob is a wealth of uh, information about the town and the ongoing projects. Uh, and our goal in all of this is, is to develop a position profile or position statement that I think serves a couple of purposes. The first, pur I, always, I always mention this, that I think that the, uh, this process is crucial for a community to step back and think about what their issues are and what they need. So it's, a, it's an important process. It could stop right there and there's value that's been added. Uh, we use it as a recruiting brochure. We take it, we send it off to uh, potential candidates that are in our database, that we're aware of, that are out there in the field, that are interested in being a town administrator in, uh, in, in the state, particularly in that, particular, that geographic region. Uh, and then the third purpose of this position statement or position profile is to lay out uh, the criteria by which we determine what a successful or ideal candidate would look like. Um, so we would put that together in the first part of uh, November. Um, it takes some time to do that because we want to spend the time talking to people, particularly the board, uh, but others as well, gathering that information and then presenting that to you uh, probably about the third week of, uh, of November uh, or thereabouts to get your go ahead. Did we get it? the simple question? Did we get it right? Did we hear from you uh, appropriately? And are we properly describing the type of candidate that you're looking for? With that in hand, we really begin our active recruitment. We'll be doing uh, more, you know, sort of initial uh, contact with candidates over the next few weeks. Uh, to uh, we're, we're doing a couple of recruitments out in your area. Um, and we'll be seeing candidates that, that might be the perfect fit to hand it, that may not be the perfect fit somewhere else. Uh, and so, and, and we're aware of candidates that would be interested in the Hamden that may not be interested in, in other locations. Uh, but we've developed quite a database of candidates um, over the years that we, we would rely upon to sort of build up that pool of candidates. Mm. Uh, during the month of December, uh, we would be doing that active recruiting with that uh, profile in hand. Uh, and then my understanding is that uh, what you're looking for us to do is once we receive all of those candidates, uh, we would then narrow it down to those that are the most um, um, in line with what you're looking for, uh, that have the most, uh, that sort of check the boxes in terms of the skills you're looking for. Uh, we would interview those, uh, a number of those candidates and narrow it down to the three or four candidates that we would then bring to the board um, along with you know, background checks on those candidates that we would then refer to you at the beginning of January uh, and then help you through the process of, uh, of interviewing those candidates and, and making a selection by the roughly the middle of, of January. So uh, and that's it in a nutshell. It's spelled out there in the, the timeline, how long this takes, how much we put into each step of the process. Uh, but uh, I'm happy to take questions and talk a little bit about uh, how we go about doing all of this. Okay. I'll open it up to questions from the board, Don. Uh, Mr. Lynch, in your opening thing, you said it's a challenging period for the municipal recruitment. Do you see that it would help difficulty creating a big enough pool to get qualified candidates? You're, well, let me put it this way. It, 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 Look, well, let me, yeah, let me put it this way. Yeah. All you have to do is, you know, pick up the paper and see that it's a challenging time to hire for anything right mm. now. It's particularly challenging in the municipal environment. Um, and, 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 you know, I have all types of sort of theories on this, and many of which revolve around the fact that people aren't necessarily aware of the positions that exist in municipal government. They don't know what a town administrator is necessarily or a town accountant. Uh, the town treasurer, whatever the case may be. So that's a, that's a challenge we have. Second is, is that we have a large number of people that might be interested in these positions, but um, there's been such a turnover over the last five years in municipal management positions. 
Only two thirds of the communities in Massachusetts have changed managers or administrators during that period of time. Uh, which is just a staggering, a staggering number that we've never seen before as the baby boomers all retire and uh, there isn't necessarily a cohort that's right behind ready to step up into these positions. Um, and then the other issue that, that in particular, many of the communities in your geographic area have, geography plays a big role uh, that you don't necessarily have the candidates out in your area that uh, you know are ready and raring to go. Um, so it requires some. I, I think the decision you've made uh, is a is a is a good one. Some you know a firm like ours to help you navigate through this process, build up that pool. But it is a challenge. It isn't just a case where there are people out there clamoring to be town administrators, uh, mm -hmm. particularly in uh, you know your area. So. You know, we have people in the smaller communities around you we, that we're aware of. We have uh, you know, people that are working in larger organizations that may be department heads uh, in larger organizations around you that may be interested in uh, a Hampton as a possibility. Um, and I think you're going to have to look at some of those people. Uh, you know, we have, and then we have sort of tied into all of that. Uh, what we have is a, a real knowledge of um, those people that are looking to become town administrators because we've been doing this for very actively for the last uh, nine years that uh, you know we've done a hundred recruitments at this point in time and uh, if a town right here in Massachusetts and uh, between knowing those people uh, those people contacting us telling us that they're interested in these types of positions uh, and our involvement, a couple of us with the Suffolk University uh, and mm -hmm. Municipal Association uh, local government certificate program, we're aware of people that have made the decision they want to stay in municipal government and they want to invest in themselves or their communities want to invest in them to become managers. So okay. we right. really work to develop around that. Okay, but I, it will I, be a one, challenge. All right, I got one other question. Is sure. uh, how important is it in the beginning to outline the roles and responsibility for the town administrator vis-a-vis uh, -vis the board of selectmen or the individual selectmen or the department heads. I think we, we've been very fortunate to have Bob here with great experience, but still there's times where there seems to be a disconnect about his role and, and his responsibility, you know, as opposed to individual selectmen or to a department head. So how important is it to outline these, this is what the t new town administrator is going to be responsible for. And how do you convey that? I think that yeah, I think that, I think that is helpful. And that's what the type of thing we, we try to get from when our conversations with the board members uh, first start part of the process. Now, I will tell you, um, you know, obviously I, I want to get that one-on-one -on -one time with each of you to, to understand what you're looking for. Uh, this is, this, this, what you've described is the challenge of municipal government uh, and municipal managers. Uh, I, I was a city manager, I was a town manager myself, uh, as our other members of the community paradigm team have served in that role. And we've all gone through the periods where, uh, the, you know, we had informal or formal authority. Uh, and there were times where if there weren't necessarily authority, there wasn't necessarily authority, uh, there was informal authority that was given and what people were looking for. And that can change over time. Boards change. They make the decision here. You, you can, uh, we want you to do all of these things that a, you know, a, a very um, strong town manager might do. And then another board might come on and say, no, we don't need to do any of those things. So that's a, sh those are shifting sands in every community. So we want to be able to understand what you're at what phase you're at now, how we, and then we would convey that very carefully through the statement, uh, but also we would convey that in our discussions with the candidates before they get to you, we brought to you. Okay, Greg, anything? Those are, and, and, and along those same lines, and again, I, 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 um, I think it's, it's the right move for you to uh, do what you're doing is 
candidates aren't going to be candidates can't call up all the board members and say i suppose they could but uh if they may they may as a result of that uh feel that they're hurting their cause in, in, in moving to hamden for the position People, so they can't call you and say you know how much authority you're going to give me but they can talk to us we, we can convey that and it, it also helps us to understand that it, and again I, I want to be careful how i put this because i want to have the, those discussions with you first but the type of person you might be looking for in terms of granting authority or separating out the, the roles and responsibilities is one that helps us identify what skill set you need in the town of Hamden. If you if you if you need someone, if, if you want to be able to hand off and say, we want you to be our chief administrative officer in its entirety, then you need a different skill set than someone that you want to have a greater, have lesser responsibility and be more of a technical advisor. Um, I don't have much to say other than uh, I thought your proposal was very good, uh, very detailed. I'm very confident as you being the professional, you know, we'll have the best interests of the town after, you know, going through the initial steps. So I look forward to starting those early processes that we get the rolling. Okay. Great. So you. definitely, uh, Bernie, we will have the best sales pitch available at the town meeting on the 30th. Excellent. And hopefully Bob will be calling you on the 31st saying, oh, my God, it was such a good sales pitch. They want to give you more money. No. Well, feel free. That's we'll, hold, we'll hold back on that. Don't worry about it. The, the, the 31st, I was expecting trick or treat is my uh, the, the, the comment that would be made to me, but that's all right. Mm -hmm. I think most uh, administrators and managers ask three questions. Obviously, what's the salary? Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, what's my span of authority? And thirdly, do I think I can have a good relationship with the Board of Selectmen? Mm -hmm. Yep. And if it's yes, on, I mean, if it's positive on those three, candidate it becomes very interested. No, well, Meatloaf said two out of three ain't bad, so we can go with that. Before your time, Dad. Yeah, really no, no, not. No, no. Come on. <laughs> you seem you seem like a fun group to work for, so I guess we've got that one down. So now yeah. we have to work on the now we have to work on the salary and the uh, span of control. So. Sure. All right, so do I have the authority from the board to go ahead and sign this uh, offer to Paradigm Group? <laughs> As we get the money, yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we voted on it, so. We yeah. did. Yeah. So, like I said, we're going to give our best efforts forward next uh, two weeks from today, basically. Excellent. 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 I'll, I'll wait to hear from Bob, and, and we'll be in touch. So they have the letter of the letter, the letter that you've mm -hmm. sent of, mm -hmm. of acceptance. Sure. Okay. Great. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And Sharon, good to meet you. <laughs> yes, I, nice to meet you. Sharon, I, I, I talk so much, she doesn't get to say anything. So. That's all right. I talk later. She'll be all the right. one talking to all of you, though. So, oh, all right. Good. Right. Thank you. Thank Have you a good night. All right. Good night. All right. I see we have uh, the fire department out in the hallway. Let's uh, bring them in. Tad, you want to do the honors? <laughs> I mean, you're like the fifth <laughs> selection. Official yeah. greeter. Oh, I don't know where John's been lately. He's on. A, he's on a cruise still. He's or overseas. Is he okay? He's on. On a hiatus. Was no, he was going one? somewhere. Where was he going? Oh, was he on a cruise or something? Was he going, was he going on a cruise? Was it Barcelona? Or I can't remember. Yeah, Some, somewhere not here. Yeah. Okay. 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 Strength in numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome. This is the Hello. Okay. So next Monday, we have an advisory hearing. We'll be going over the warrant. One of the questions is the brush truck. It seems like the numbers have changed. They know that uh, you came before us, gosh, Andrew was a month or so ago, That's and talked about some of the difficulties. You had a field trip to Sturbridge and learned some things about outfitting the truck, et cetera, that would make it more advantageous or a better performance for the town of Hamden, basically. So uh, it's been a, an, a road to get there. And Don has some questions about the journey that we took and how we can make sure this doesn't happen in the future, basically. You know, we certainly are appreciative what of the grant. Well, what does happen that is the federal government we went to gave the us. town meeting for a grant for ten thousand bucks, 
and then came back later on for 34,000 more. Okay, so when we So I, I was just interested. I was just, when you approached that. Uh, so when we went to and filled out the FEMA grant, which is almost a year and a half ago, we were yeah. awarded it. Um, if we came down to the selectman's office, it, the selectman have to, you know, first of all, sign yeah, off yeah. on that. And then the second part of it was the town has to match their their part of that money. Mm. So once that's voted on, um, we knew the grant was secure, and we went out um, and started meeting with truck companies and building the truck. That's when. Um, so one thing, one thing on the grant though is the grant did not have a specific size or dimension or anything of the truck. It was just funds to purchase a truck. So we had to go out and design a truck for the mm -hmm. town of Camden. Mm -hmm. So that was part of the money they gave us towards building the truck for us. Again, it's a year and a half from when the grant was filled out, mm -hmm. filed, to when we were notified we had it, and mm -hmm. to the process we are today. We've talked to several truck building, fire truck building companies before we filed the grant, and they all said $230,000 is enough. And we know what inflation is. We have an example of it at the highway department. We mm -hmm. start off with 300000 spent how much? Six hundred. So that's how we got to where we are today. The truck committee was appointed after town meeting. They did diligent work here. I, I can't say enough of the guys that are here in that committee. And they can answer a lot more better questions about the truck, and that's why they're here this evening, if you have any. Mm -hmm. But that's how we got to where so we are. You said the truck didn't give, didn't give a specific... Yeah, it's not it's not like you're walking out and buying a police car you know usually you got your state police cars are similar to other police cars a brush truck is different for each community community just like we went out and looked at yeah but, but you said that they didn't give specifications when they did they said it had to be a per it had to be a brush truck for us to replace the m37 well but the grant says the grant that was given says a brush rapid attack truck gross weight 19,500 pounds, seating capacity of five, carries 300 gallons of water, pumps 500 gallons per minute, class A foam cell, vehicle has pump and roll capabilities, comes with a winch, LED lighting, packing, telescoping lights, vehicle is outfitted with extended front bumper and brush guard, mm -hmm. full aluminum roll cage, as well as underbody steel plates to protect engine and transmission during off-road use, vehicle dimensions, height eight feet, 90 inches. Cost two hundred thirty thousand. That's what they approved. Mm -hmm. So, for so you're telling me though they didn't. They just set a brush truck, but they did have a specific. There's that's all. There's I, a specific look, dimension on I, it. Yes, but I'm not against the truck, but we we have to have some kind of continuity and policies and procedure to make these things happen. Now, my other concern is while we're on it is that they awarded the grant to the Hamden Volunteer. Fire Department Incorporated, all right? Because your charter says that you will operate the fire department. Can we back up and address the first part? I yeah. wasn't I'm just telling, I'm reading what the grant says. No, I, and I, I get it. That's that's exactly, you're, you're reading off the town, what the town, what we wanted for the town approval, correct? And that's what they approved. Right, so at that time, <laughs> what I'm saying, when I first did introduction, is we had, we couldn't go out and build the truck until we knew the town was on it and it was a year and a half prior from when we filed for the grant to by the time we are here yeah, today okay, yeah. so the costs have gone up there's nothing we can but you added stuff to it you, you decided you needed yeah. more stuff which but, is fine but the it's, other piece is is we subtracted a lot of stuff off that like if you buy that truck where you said five people that truck can't fit in the fire station there's no addition on the fire station. It's not happening right now. Well, we've never so seen. We've never seen. We've never given us an estimate of the things who you're buying it from or anything else. But that's beside the point. So, okay. So it's there not, we are. It's there. not really beside the point. I think you. <laughs> you can laugh all you want. It's not. I don't think this is funny at all. I don't think so either. Then why are you laughing? Because I'm because I'm very concerned that we went to the town meeting that we stood up there said we wanted ten thousand nine hundred dollars. The town voted for it. Good for them. And then three weeks later, we're told we need another for thirty-four thousand dollars. And how does it make us look? So your point about the ten thousand dollars was the minimum match required by the FEMA grant. The grant. So that's what we locked in. Basically, look, we're going to give you two something. You got to come up with ten. 
then you went out for okay now let's see the vehicle we need to do the right thing for the town of hamlin mm -hmm. right so the vehicle the number you wanted is what you want and what we're looking at is that was a rough that was a rare very rough specs mm -hmm. of what we needed to get sure. to to get us some dollar amount the right. state wanted to see some dollar amount so that was our feds Fed. and that was our rough specs then finally mm -hmm. when you get into it and you find out it doesn't fit in the station so you went from an extended cab down to a regular cab we all determined we needed a smaller truck to be able to fit through the woods mm -hmm. so you reduce that that reduces part prices on some stuff we found out booster reels we went to Sturbridge we looked and saw in Sturbridge mm -hmm. some of that stuff didn't work we didn't want to spend this money on a truck to go in the woods like Sturbridge did and rip the entire reel right off the top of the truck okay, and turn around you, and you explain it so Thanks. what I'm just saying is to bring it down on this price so but the, first, stuff. but the first number was just to assure the FEMA yeah. people, yes, the town will honor the match part. Yep. And then we're going to go out and see what it's going to take to actually build the truck you need. And like you say, let's not repeat the mistakes that Sturbridge made and, and get a truck that and just breaks you, in a year. Just to give you an idea how much prices change, from when we were here last time talking to you, to keep the same price on the truck that we gave you last time, we've already had to cut stuff off the truck. Stuff that was going to benefit the town that we're not going to get now because we had to cut the dollar amount on the truck to keep it to where we are. Because every week that goes by, without locking something with the manufacturer, prices are going up. We know mm -hmm. Ford's going on strike. Mm -hmm. So when I said last meeting, by the time we get this truck, this truck's going to be over $300,000 with the stuff we have on it. Mm -hmm. The prices just keep changing. So to go buy something from a year and a half ago or longer for dollar amount, not going to happen. And the hard thing is you can't actually get the guy the order until town meeting actually. Exactly. But money. if we have enough here, like he said, mm -hmm. he could give us enough of a guarantee lock in so mm -hmm. we can make it to town mm -hmm. meeting. But mm -hmm. every time we keep changing something here, because we have uh, about a what's, price, what's what the happens. current number we're looking at? Uh, we, it was another 34 or 40. Yeah, another 34. It would it would be, I believe, 219 plus uh, 10, 9, I think, plus the additional amount. That, if it uh, wasn't the number, the number, by the way, is in the right. in the uh, yeah. Yeah. updated. Uh, Andrew, what would the number be you. if you wanted to go back to the truck like you guys designed? You said it would gone up. It wouldn't be thirty four. It'd be we, forty. We'd actually have to go back because we just sized everything. We were just on the phone on yeah. Thursday. We met with them and everything. And Eddie, I think you've got the. Uh, yeah, we met Thursday and then we met again um, Saturday, and then he emailed us the corrections this afternoon. I mean, if you'd like to see the specs, I've got a copy of both. No, you guys I mean, they mean more to you than me. No, oh, I've got more than enough copies. If you guys want to keep it so you can at least mm -hmm. go through it, those are what we're looking at with the truck. The you total cost of the truck is $273,600 as it stands today. Right. But does that take something off it you guys really wanted? Well, we were supposed to have some extra, an extra booster reel, which we cut off. We were supposed to have a better, safer, a longer step on the back which we're looking at having to make some modifications on it because that's a prefab step to make it more of a standard step safety. when you want to look at a safety. bucket truck a safety piece more, two steps in the back to climb up on top to get your equipment and whatnot which is a safety mm -hmm. so you know stuff like that's a no-brainer you need it so mm -hmm. how old's the current brush truck it is 1953 seven years and we're getting a two hundred seventy three thousand dollar truck Two hundred seventy-six thousand dollars truck for forty grand, roughly. Yeah, mm -hmm. no brainer. All right. The problem is, right. we all know how much inflation has gone up in the last year and a half. Right. So, right. yeah, the additional is thirty-four on the nose. And I don't think, actually, you know, I'm going to speak for Don. I don't think the money is where Don's going. He's talking about the process, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And we're all, but I think we all understand the work you guys are doing. You're coming here with, and I think Pat's missing also, right? Yeah, thanks, Bart. But you've got a five-member truck committee. That been working on this on your, actually on your own time probably, mm -hmm. right? How, how long so is it? Gonna, if you ordered it, if you ordered it November one, how long will it take? It's all custom. And is that well, gonna is that gonna fit within minimum, the minimum a year? It, We've made it. It will. <clears throat> no, no, not in the not in the oh, fire the garage, department. And the in the uh, uh, the period of, of of the grant is till September twenty twenty four. Is that gonna? What's your question? Well, if it arrives after the grant, yeah, will yeah, yeah, right. pay for it. Or, you, or if you just order it, will that will that Lock stop the clock on that? Yeah. The grant the grant says the, the grant says the period is between oh, we can nine twenty two yeah. and nine twenty four. We file extension. 
And FEMA grants that pretty we, regularly. We, yeah, we spoke to him about that, and he said, he said no problem. You just need to file extension. Okay. Okay. So let's talk, let's talk about the grant was awarded to the Hamlin Volunteer Fire Department Incorporated. Yeah, that's the identity that was in FEMA Go. Um, I spoke to him about that as well. Um, he feels like the town should maybe possibly have their own identity. I don't know who. Well, that. we do now because now you're a combined department. I mean, the, the volunteer no, fire. That's not what I mean. Like the town of Hamden. Yeah. Right now, the police department's in there. We're in there, and someone else is in there. He want. He says, if anything, should make an amendment to wipe that free and clear, and start with one person and one, you know, whoever. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm just. I'm just. Excuse me, John. I'm just concerned that it doesn't. Some bureaucrat down in Washington say, "Well, wait a minute. This is." You know, well, a we, volunteer so, organization, and they're really not. So, so I don't want to screw up the. So when we filled the grant out, we put all in all the correct information, and it pre-populated this. It pre-populated the volunteer fire department that okay. was already in there as an identity. We assigned it to the town of Hamden's bank account. Oh, okay. All right. So that's, that's was one of what the process it goes right to the town. Yeah. Um, we checked on that account so, twice. So you're saying FEMA Go has different pre-populated thing, and the town of Hamden presently yeah. isn't in their system as the town of Hamden. Correct. So they probably got the fire, they got the highway, they got the Seems police. So they, maybe they have, more under MEMA, yes, I think, but not there. FEMA. They only have three. They have the police department, and the person in charge of that one is um, our town treasurer. Mm -hmm. They have the fire department. I am now in charge of that one. And they had someone from uh, Hamden Public Safety in Springfield. I don't even remember their name. I, that's what, not, So it's good. Yeah. It's good to have this talk. That something does need to be done, an amendment needs to be entered, and that's something I, you know. Do we need to do when we get the truck? Do we need to? Uh, do we have to pay for it first? We, is it a reimbursement thing, or do we just send them the bill? No, we we um, will request. We go into FEMA Go, and we tell them that you know here's the truck invoice, and they'll send us the money. The only thing uh, thing to be watchful of is it only stays there for thirty days. So we have to make sure that we have that invoice and deliver your truck within. Oh, okay. So it's, okay. a, a so it's not like a head. So, Sounds like so actually we should probably have to keep. Mm -hmm. Bob, the make a, to make a keep note maybe for the so. next manage, emergency management meeting. But let's look into the steam and go thing so we're all on the same page. Because it does sound like, you know, part of MEMA, FEMA, we should be all, you know, up in that. All right. Do you have a plan B if they say no? They say no as what? <laughs> they say no. You don't get the thirty-four thousand. I say no. We're going to get two hundred and seventy-five and go for it. Uh, plan Plan B. If they say no, I guess we'll come to the town next spring with a uh, a full request. I don't. Know. <laughs> well, the grant well, doesn't expire the, until next September. Still, so you can yeah. still though. You can still. I mean, you still get the grant, right? Yeah. Um, and. I mean, would you be chopping? Truck, would you be chopping so much off the truck without the thirty-four? You guys would be like, yeah. we're not well, happy well, with this. So the piece, I guess you could say, the piece we chop off right now, we're looking at. We want the engine of the truck to pump water, mm -hmm. so we could do five hundred gallons per minute. If that would be the first thing that would have to go, it still doesn't get you under the dollar amount. I I also think sorry, Andy. Yeah, uh -huh. I also think that right now our brush truck we have only does brush fires, so it sits there. All year, and it maybe goes mm -hmm. out a few times in spring. And, and this one does other stuff, right? This one is more a uh, versatile piece of equipment. It's going to have seam lighting on it. It can go out, you know, in, in the bad weather during the winter time. It might be our, our first attack vehicle. It's going to mm -hmm. be able to go to our water supplies and draft water if we need it to be. It's going to have the four wheel drive where it can go through the snow up to the water. Um, we lost our dam, so we're looking at other mm -hmm. avenues mm -hmm. to get at access to water. That won't slow us down or limit us. I mean, we already have a big enough job trucking our water and bringing our water to the fire scene. Not to mention, um, you know, it's a lack of of water in this town, so mm -hmm. of access to it. Okay. Yeah. All right, bringing everybody. Uh, so, are you prepared, or Andrew, or whichever, it. next Monday, to give a little same talk on the type thing? Uh, I think Andrew is volunteered to do that. Wow. Um, but I will be with him. <laughs> no, he's, he's, Thanks, Andrew. He's, he's yeah. had some ideas about possibly doing a, um, um, a PowerPoint. I don't know if we're set up for that auditorium or not. 
Or the, That's uh, not for the advisory committee. I'm just no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Clearly, the town meeting, maybe something of you know, five slides. Yeah, we First should be. Picture, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like I, the picture. I'm of going the to have there. something available uh, for other boards that want to put up a couple of slides. Sure. Yep. But we we ought to limit it. You say five would be good. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm looking at a picture of what we have. Pictures, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. A picture yeah. of Sturbridge, which gets yeah. you somewhat close so people can see it. Mm -hmm. A timeline of every, you know, of our of our stuff and whatever few other topics that we need to hit, whether it's the breakout of okay. the dollar amount, you know, okay. for the grant and this and what we need extra for the truck. Mm -hmm. Pictures are good. I, I, I'm talking to the highway superintendent about taking pictures of the tractor that he wants and versus the tractor that he has and mm -hmm. so forth. Yeah. yeah. What's going on okay. with the old brush truck after all said and done? Has to be has to be turned in. Yeah, we have to. So no, far. Ghostbusters isn't getting it. So this has to go out to bid or put it on municipal bid or something like that. We'll put it on municipal bid. Yeah. Part of the grant is they, they ask you um what you're doing with okay. a piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. well, I mean okay. so then I will come back in and go back into general fund. General fund. Mm -hmm. Yep, goes okay. in general fund, but it's not our. You're not expecting much out of it, anyhow, I'm sure. No. Seven years old. I don't know. Somebody in this business probably. A lot of people are interested in bidding on that. I would say between five and 15 would be my guess. Really? 100? Our old yeah. thousand. Went for thousand. Thousand. Really? Oh. Yeah. Is that worth mentioning? Well, look, look at our old. Look at that Actually, old it is. Yeah. Actually, it is worth mentioning, yeah. I mean, you know, that's going to come back into free cash in the following year, so it's definitely worth mentioning. So, all right. Thank you, gentlemen. gentlemen. Thank you so much. I know you got training next, so thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, committee. Good night. All right. Good night. Next, we have Mr. Larry Blake. Greetings. How are you? This will be quick and short, or short and quick. Um, I'm having a sale on my front lawn Saturday. It's supposed to rain. I was wondering, is there any possibility of using Academy Hall, or what's the procedure for for that? In my experience, I can't speak for the other members, we've had non-municipal organizations mm -hmm. rent town buildings for use. Okay. Okay. We have a fee in place for the auditorium, the senior center, I can't recall us having rented out Academy Hall because they're all pretty nervous about people going in there, you know, when they have things there. Is it something you it's could a, it's use? A Ten to two sale. It's on my front lawn. I just sell the stuff I weave, and I have a potter showing up. I suppose I hope it's good weather because we have the uh, fall festival. Oh, that yeah, day, right? it yeah. does. It's, I'm, I'm just trying to do a, a backup plan because yeah. right now it doesn't look like it's going to be nice. Well, it's a 60% chance, yeah. yeah. I mean, 40% chance it won't. <laughs> Positivity. Okay. That's it, yeah. That's it. Stop at the shrine. Light a candle. Hey, Come on, you. yeah. But, okay. All right, so there is a fee involved. If you're going to do a fee, I mean, personally, yeah. I'd suggest the auditorium. Because then we're not worried about it. I mean, I was just in Academy Hall yesterday we during their the event. the historical society yeah. that, that yeah. they worry about. Right. I mean, historical society. What's the uh, fee for the town hall then? Lauren can look Is that there... up. I can check with you tomorrow if you Yes, you can. Yes, that would be great. Yeah. 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 I guess that's a good question. Why don't we rent out, rent out Academy Hall then? I mean, it's a good location for hosting events at, too. You know, so there's a little different the events. Could, I mean, yeah, the Garden Club uses it. I mean, right. there's not a ton of stuff downstairs. Most of the mm -hmm. historical society is in the basement mm -hmm. or on the second floor. Yeah. yeah. So the main floor is more of like a yeah, all. I don't need the bathroom. I don't need the kitchen. I just need <clears throat> the main room. Yeah, I'd rather get some use out of it than you know being locked up most of the time. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's it's just that it's very convenient. It's right Obviously, a lot more convenient. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, all right. Well, I should get your numbers on what yeah, the thing is. I'll okay. check with that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Sorry. Right, thank you. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Charging station. Uh, if you take the uh, TA report, mm -hmm. item number 10 gives you an update on the places that I've checked with. So, sorry, Bob, I, mean, yeah. I, I have thoughts on this again. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've, Jerry's Park, We looked. At, I looked at that. I think um, it would work. It's very visible. 
you probably have to increase the pad, uh, blacktop pad there. Um, uh, I also checked with the owner of the parking lot at the mini mall. Uh, it was suggested that I check out the, the area of Dunkin' Donuts. One problem with that is that there, you'd have to run a line from uh, the utility pole and probably have to you know, put it under. So that, that, would, that would increase the expense. Mm. Oh, he is very positive about it. And I said, you know, I think in terms of visibility, um, putting it between the back end of the La Cucina restaurant and the street and Summers Road, where there are parking spaces. Which part? Keep in mind, that's a, keep in mind, that's a separate lot. Yeah. It's not it's part of his property. Side. The La Cucina lot is a separate lot. <laughs> we, we discussed this and he didn't tell me that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. So Nino owns that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it was a bank lot before right. back yeah. in the I day. I was told it's not that the whole the... lot was, I went down and checked with uh, no. Well, it's I mean, possible he did buy it recently, wasn't there? Yeah. yeah. No. Well, I don't know why. Why would why would he buy it and then then Samina would have to lease it from him? Yeah. You know? So what? You know what we discussed and what he likes about it and understood immediately is that you know going forward there are going to be businesses, particularly that serve the public, mm -hmm. having charging available because as I do once in a while, I'll go into a grocery store where they have the charger outside. Uh, I know one where there's a level three and I stay longer and probably buy more waiting for the charge to increase. Mm -hmm. And so I, Big Y is doing that. They haven't done it in, in uh, Long Meadow and I'm not sure where else they, they haven't done it, but I know they've done it in Pittsfield because I've been out there and used it. Um, so, I mean, I think that's a, an emerging model, and he recognized it right away. Mm -hmm. And we did discuss that area. So, uh, uh, I think the mini mall makes good sense. I think in that back lot by Duncan Owens might be more beneficial, but like you said, you have to run the line. You've got to run the line. Um, um, it might be closer to the street. I also want to withdraw my suggestion of Yarish Park. Oh. Only because after viewing it and talking to some people, I think it doesn't fit that area aesthetically. Mm. Yeah, I think you're probably right about that. I thought about the same thing, and I thought, you know, there's probably people who are going to uh, be associated with parks and support parks who are probably going to say, don't take yeah. parkland. Especially if you live in that neighborhood there in Country Club Drive, yeah. and you, you drive by every day, you just yeah. with objects and stuff like and that. And the other so option is still uh, senior center. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I want to go back to Cumbies. Now, I know we've been hearing for the last couple of years that there's a deal in place. Yeah. I mean, if this is a good use for municipal use, can we take it by eminent domain? So um, nobody's doing anything with it. It's looking like crap. I did call them after I got the email, which I shared with the board. I called and we had an extended, extended conversation. And they maintained uh, that they have a deal and that they're not interested in selling it. Um, the problem with eminent domain, eminent domain is always available. Uh, you have to get town meeting approval and <coughs> then you had a special, I mean, we have a timeline here. Then they go to court. They yeah, they go to court for land damages mm -hmm. and it's not, a, it's not the best way to acquire property. Uh, friendly taking would be much better. But I, you know, I invite you to call him up. Uh, he called me back. So you and, did. Well, that's good. I mean, there, there's that communication line there. But yeah. like I said, this last two and a half years, we've been hearing that there's a deal in place. Well, I know. That's what everyone in the building has, uh, that I've talked to said that, well, <laughs> they've been saying this for quite a while. But So where are we going with this? Like I say, I had text. I was texting with Rich Redeker. It's something he's interested in, but I don't know if he'd really be interested in he's a private company yeah. and random people just coming and parking in his parking lot yeah while he's doing business liability. yeah liability is one thing so, what, what, but, what about the what the where the hardware store used to be that parking lot there 
It's still private property, still too, right? Right. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, there's not a lot there, right? No, uh, it's not. You know, it's not like pack, it's never packed. I mean. Right. Mm -hmm. The only other argument that I think is meaningful here is that if we were to do it on public property, any income that we generate, Split right and there will be, could be dedicated somehow, or just put in the general fund, mm -hmm. or dedicated to some kind of so the original good program. Uh, the original plan was to put it at the senior center. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and Becky was, I tried to reach her today, but she was gone. She was supportive of it. She was gone. They, they leave. I think I call around 3.30. So it seems I'll to hear me. I'll tomorrow, I'm sure. Yeah. So it seems to me this is one of those, if you build it, they will come. Oh, I think so. I think so, absolutely. <laughs> Again, it's... we've had this conversation at the senior center, both at the mm -hmm. board meeting, which I go to, and the building committee meeting right. and both groups are against it and i think some of the locations that you shared behind the building which is where the dumpster is and the trash truck comes yes, right. the deliveries yeah. come was not a good location mm -hmm. at the building committee meeting today <clears throat> the parking lot design that was part of the proposal shifts the whole parking lot around instead of being perpendicular to the street the parking would now be parallel with the street going that way, which might be advantageous or not. Again, though, and I think you heard this from uh, Ted Zebert in a previous meeting, the parking lot can get pretty full of yeah. different events. Yeah, I, think, yeah. I was thinking southwest corner because it's close to the street. I know we looked south behind the building where the trash bins are, but uh, the southwest corner is near Heart Springs, but actually closer to the entrance. South, sorry, northwest would be. So you're going to the entrance and turn left. Entrance. Take a sharp Heart left. Southwest. Would be the corner. Down the corner. Northwest would be where Heart Springs is. Yeah. Next to Allen Street. Yeah. Southwest would be at the. Go in the entrance and take it. Take a sharp left. Go down to the, to the corner. Northwest. Well, you wouldn't go. Summers Road is here. The end no, of the parking lot is here. Allen Street. Uh, Allen? It's Allen Street. Yeah. Yes. Um, what about the police department? Uh, I don't think, I think the there's uh, four spaces. This thing is going to need four spaces. There's not yeah. uh, an adequate uh, place for, for it there. So, Although eventually, uh, that's where police vehicles are going, especially administrative vehicles. So, but that's that's a bigger. Just lift. just thinking about the run of the line. I mean, if we, if we were talking, we were talking Redikers possibly. That's still a long run too. It is. It's no further from there than it is down the yep. mini mall in the back by Dunkin' yep. Donuts. Yep. I mean, is it is it going to be that expensive to run all down there, or is there already lines running somewhere between the buildings? Well, I can certainly uh, just curious. You know, I mean, I, that's like the optimal spot. I know it's public property and not private property. I mean, it's private property, not public property. So that's that caveat there. But you know, it seems, seems like a, it seems like the most logical spot. Which one? The mini mall. In the back, right? yeah, in the in back. The that's back. right. Yeah. I think I got distracted by the the talk of the lock and yeah, part, yeah, like yeah. yeah. But the back part does yeah. seem like it would work. Uh, here we go. Is this your bad HDMI port? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so I think we narrowed it down. If you're taking Garish out of the mix, then yeah. I think we're looking at. Uh, I thought it made sense. The, at the mini mall. Well, in the back. Right, I'll, I'll explore it further, but uh, I. Uh, did go down and ask for ownership. Well, and that's what I was told. We're looking at GIS here, and clearly it's a separate look. Yeah. Parcel according to the assessment. Right. It's almost like a park and ride in the back back there. Yeah. If I dunk it down, it's right. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's but something over there would be a benefit to a number of businesses, not just a restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. You, know? you go in there and work out. Yeah. 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 Quite yeah. Quite well, I was just going to say. If, if it's going to be as busy with charging a car as you think it's going to be, those people, if they're parked at Reddick or they're parked at the police station, they have nowhere to go. Right. If right. they're parked back there in that spot behind mm -hmm. some of the Dunkin' Donuts, they walk down and, it, and all those businesses could see a benefit, which is helping you sell the, the whole deal. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know how much, but that's what I think it's better than a part to it. Yeah. Well, right. you maybe even work something out with them. Maybe you get a coupon at the pump and say, I get a free coffee at Dunkin' or I get a slab of pizza that 
everything else. Uh, you know, I mean, there's creative ways to do something with that. Well, I, I think, think with the dearth of level threes, and you're not going to have a problem filling the spots there. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, so I'll expect that that's the consensus now. I will yeah. explore okay. that further. Okay. okay, good. Okay, policy for filling vacancy. I did uh, share with the board, and I talked to Bob this morning. I was surprised that we hadn't like put this out to the other elected boards for their comments. You it's know. out there now. Okay, so I would say, hopefully, hear back. Heck, we may have a comment back from the assessors. I do want to say that. Uh, you know, Jay Peruso has stepped down from Board of Assessors due to work commitments, and we, you know, yeah. we regret his loss on the board. But it does provide an opportunity for people in town to, although it's pretty specialized knowledge and something yeah, like that. Definitely. We think of the people, Henry Bausch, Chuck Woodcup, et cetera. But they have a good crew down there, don't they, Lauren? They do. Except some, for that girl. <laughs> some of the best, <laughs> even though she's not in the country right now. But yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, we encourage people. We we're happy to see uh, people step up for a planning board application last week. So, hopefully, we'll, Don, if you don't mind, we'll wait yes, for some yes, comments yes, back. Yes. Okay. All right. Warrant and motions. Uh, you have uh, the. This is not the warrant that we filed. Obviously, we filed a clean warrant. Mm -hmm. But uh, here's uh, something that's uh, getting to be the final. <laughs> Uh, I included the motions with I didn't <clears throat> remove the uh, articles themselves because I thought you might want to have to refer to them. Uh, we do need a number for the architectural design which I'm for ready, the senior center, which I'm ready to give you tonight in okay. two seconds. So we had a meeting with the uh, building committee this morning. We interviewed the two firms that submitted interest, uh, EDM and architectural insight. Uh, both have given us numbers that are under the number we're asking for, which is a motion from Don Collins of 60,000. Okay. So I'll just put 60 in there. Right. Put 60 in there. <clears> the <throat> other changes that I made or that uh, <clears throat> after the discussion. I would and also, I would say that we are in, this is, I think, advice from Rose as well, uh, that that one would not include a line item. This is a warrant article that you're going to spend down and Okay. You know, some of these line items, you got to be careful where, where it inflates their budget for the following yeah, yeah, year. Yeah. It looks bad, like, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I also <laughs> switched over some uh, to the, the general stabilization fund rather than uh, unappropriated free cash. So, if you want to take a look at those, you may want to make some changes. Oh, really? hmm? Yeah. Oh. Um, out of concern about the tax rate. Kind of a bold call on your part, Bob, but okay. <laughs> maybe you'd ask the board what we thought before you did it. Okay. Uh, fiber optic. Uh, uh, Craig, you had some comments. I do. Um, first, Bob, did you talk to the treasurer at all, just to make sure that the wording here about how he was going to do the, the short-term borrowing as opposed to the, the bond? This authorizes him. Yes, this is fine. Okay. Does it, do you think it needs to say anything in there about short-term borrowing and bond anticipation? This is the language that I revised based on what town council sent. Okay. Because the way it looks here, it looks like we're borrowing, borrowing eight and a half million, eight and half million on the tax rate. Right. Which we're, the short term borrow is not going to go on the tax rate. No, it will not. So that, that's my only question is does it need to be worded in there differently? And I don't know if the we can find We can find a way to clarify that uh, for the public, right. I'm sure. Okay. But, uh, and then just on the topic of fiber optic, I'm sure. Most residents probably received this <laughs> attention Hamden residents uh, solicitation in their mail today. I know people were going door to door um, from the Alliance for Quality Broadband Group, um, urging residents to vote against our fiber optic project. I wonder who's funding the Alliance. Um, well, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked, Bob. Um, according to their website, um, thanks, Johnny. They are a <laughs> lobbyist company in association and have connections with Charter Communications. Mm. So um, yep. once I found that out, I reached out to the town clerk and asked, do they have to file a finance a campaign finance form because they're now directing things to our town meeting for vote? You know, they need to file a campaign finance report, and then we'll know more about them. But just want to let residents know that you know this this informational packet that went out is full of errors. It's <laughs> full of scare tactics, and if they really want to know more, there's information on our town website, and we've been very open with the communications about the project. Um, you know, they can, they can do that and you know, reach out to me. I'll answer as many questions as I can. Um, 
I was also I, surprised at that. I thought yeah. it was fairly yeah. harsh. Yeah, and, I wish they had spent that money on improving the uh, improving charter system. system. Well, you know, <laughs> instead. Yeah, you know, I got to wonder. You know, the yeah. corporate greed is coming to hand in, and you know they're mm -hmm. trying to scare residents from making the right decision to benefit the town. I think yeah. I mean people are going to have a question. Okay, eight point five million. Oh, that's understandable. That's understandable. We're going to have a great explanation, Craig and the uh, Whip City team, that will be able to explain exactly what's happening with how that's working out. So, do not let this type of thing dissuade you from coming. The next uh, two I did 15 and 15, which is what we discussed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, I can make them. I can um, take again, it all thing. out of take it all out of free cash again if you want. Well, I'm just looking. These are both free cash here. Yep. Yeah. There's an appropriate. Oh no, I see. But, but, uh, yeah. Yep. Um, I think same. Five I think times. Article Three. She was good with the, put in the budget. Article four, it's the same thing, Don, where do you want to take it, make the perception that there's a bump in a line item or keep it as a warrant article? Like you're just raising for a quick motion. I think, I think we should keep it as a warrant because it's, right. it's a special thing. It's not right, going exactly. to be not, It's a one-time shot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So a couple of those. Bob, maybe review good rows. I think it's a it's a well-made point. Like you don't want to have these spikes. Yeah. In line items. Yeah. No, I, and I was going to suggest uh, to the advisory committee uh, something that I think uh, other towns have done that I think makes a lot of sense, and that is, in addition to your line item budget for each department, underneath that, mm -hmm. put another line for any kind of one-time, small-scale capital investments. I've seen that sometimes in our in our yeah. uh, green sheets. You know, in prior yeah. years, you know, there was a trend. Yeah. Heck. That, and we did legal one year, remember? Yeah, John, yeah. Yeah. That way it doesn't doesn't get overlooked sure. in the next budget process. Yeah. Okay, the other two are the yeah. obviously CPA money. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a meeting tomorrow night. The CPA board is meeting at, with the board's indulgence. Well, I think there are three meetings going on tomorrow night, so that meeting will be held here in this office. I'm an at-large member, so I'll open it up for them. And I don't think it's pretty obvious what the, you know what these are to get more i think during our tour we were given a pretty good explanation of what these yeah. two things were uh we don't have i thought the animal control thing was going to cover the beaver work no we had talked about that right we yeah. talked yeah. about it yeah so uh, is eight hundred dollars all we need we don't have a dollar amount. Okay, so it's definitely going to be more than eight hundred dollars, though. Right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's okay. uh, like, like I said last week. It was hundred dollars per beaver in yeah. open season, one hundred fifty dollars per beaver in out of season. Yeah. So I mean, it, we don't know until we catch them. <laughs> right. So, so we're going to have a much larger number than eight hundred. I would assume. Well, we don't know how much. Right. But we're we're what did Mark's yeah. email say? That um, he's ready to start as of next week. So if there's possible, we might know mm -hmm. a dollar now. Okay. All right. Um, the other one, the land, two land trust articles, mm -hmm. or the land trust article is not a actual money thing. It's really just a, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I do think, and I don't know if uh, Don or Craig, you brought this up. I'd like to really get a handle on where we are with the CRs. I did see the email saying that really, we only have two. Mm -hmm. yeah. But really get a sense of what that obligates the town to. In our, is the funding for that gone? Right, right. right. Uh, tractor, I certainly appreciate your point about, um, you know, getting some video thing. Mark did say that there was an adjustment he could make to the option that he could bring that 108 down a bit, a smaller size on the attachment. That's and the trade-in. And the trade-in as well. Hoping to get this under 100 for the work they have, so. Uh, pictures will help. Actually, I'd say drive the old one there, but if it's not going to make it, then I'd like, like to bring it here, but it failed on the way. Yeah. Uh, I think we beat the truck to death. Um, appreciate them coming in and explaining. It's an explanation thing. The DFib. Okay, you want. Okay, so those three articles, including the DFib, you're looking to take out of savings. I had a couple conversations, uh, one with the treasurer. Right, that he's worried about. And that yeah. they're worried about. Yeah. So, and they're probably going to recommend that we attack the general. First of all, 
we are well above what mm -hmm. the Department of Revenue recommends. 10% mm -hmm. of your operating budget. We're, we're around at 14%. So we have, you know, we're in good mm -hmm. shape for reserves. Right. The other thing I talked to Dick about, and, you know, we appropriated, or gosh, we passed an article for roughly 230 for the new dump truck last year. And in the past, he's always recommended taking that out yeah. of stabilization. This year, he didn't. He kind of slipped his mind. So that would also, if he does that type of thing, that will also help the tax rate because it won't go on the tax rate. It'll just come out of savings. So if you're looking here, you're talking 100, let me say 140, 160, potentially 220 if, you, if the uh, master plan passes. Not you okay. saw that they, I didn't think that the one stop was yeah, going to yeah. give us another 75. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're pretty sure about that. Because the first yeah. 75 came from them. Mm -hmm. so. But that thing, uh, the emails I got that I forwarded had two different numbers on them. So was that, that was two different applications that it turned us down for. Mm. Yeah, I haven't gotten that far today. Oh, okay, I wonder. I knew one was private master plan. I didn't know yeah. what the other one was. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, so you're looking to. What was the water district one? I hope not. Yeah. Mm. Um, so the DFib 24, boom, 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 boom. And again, we're not at that point yet with the motions per se. Right. Okay. Uh, Don, do you have any sense of what the report is going to be from government study? Okay. You no, know, they're still working. I think they're working on it. Are they meeting tonight, tomorrow night? Tomorrow night. I think they're working on it tomorrow night. I saw their agenda. But... Okay. All right. I, I think. Well, am I correct? I think what they're just going to do is say, this is what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back to you in the so staff report. Yeah. 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 No slideshow? Oh. Well, no, they may have one. I don't know. Oh. It should be after a three hour discussion of the CPA request. So they may be, you know, <laughs> for the we'll fence. email it to you. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Let's talk about that fence. Oh, uh, pilot is what it is. I yeah. don't think we really. I haven't made any changes in the capital requests. And again, they are coming. All they are uh, too. would come out of. Uh, It'll be interesting. Well, no more next Monday, right? Are they going yeah, to send somebody to our meeting to, our meeting to talk to these points for the capital requests? Yeah, yeah, they they really yeah, yeah, they typically do. Yeah. Yeah. If Rich is in town. <laughs> but like Don said, you know, this may be moot, right? Depending yeah. on Monday in uh, Wolverham. I'll be tuning in. Mm -hmm. We'll all be tuning in. I will be at our meeting. We'll be live streaming. Mm -hmm. We'll be at our meeting. Oh, well. Yeah. It's 7 o'clock, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, I would have liked to have gone to our meeting to see how they address it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, okay. I do have a commitment at seven point. So, Don, quickly, you had a question about, uh, or. Yeah, you just, got a question. I, I thought of, I kick it to Craig because he is the chair of the Board of Health and if he could answer your question. So. Well, so just go through this, the special permit process that, you know, <clears throat> they send to different boards and committees and mm -hmm. the highway and all of them always respond. They always have something. And, but the Board of Health, when I, I've never seen one. So I don't know where they go. I don't know who's approving them. So when I was talking to the Jane, she says Finn reviews them and looks for any compliance issues. Okay. If there's nothing, mm -hmm. then he signs off on them. I think we did vote. What, a year and a half ago to no, allow about Finn to, mm -hmm. but um, well, we uh, Finn on the septic tanks. On the septic, but this is a, this is a special permit That's for. True. Yeah, so I guess from what from what Gene was saying, he's been if there's no issues, he's just been right. signing off on. Them. Uh, but she also said that they've been delivered to the selectman's office, and if you look on some of the yeah, yeah. the things they were CC'd to selectman, mm -hmm. so. I'm, they should have been made available to us, mm -hmm. so we weren't getting either. So I guess if I, I guess my question is: I don't care if Finn does. I don't care who yeah. does it because I don't have that expertise. Right. But I think we should at least know that oh, they're, yeah. they're, they're coming. God. Well, this almost gets into correspondence, yeah. basically. Yeah. You know, that used to be in the back of the folder before. And we should be talking about a consent agenda, like a lot of towns do. Yeah. You know, so that's so any of those it's things like, these like permits. The, it's yeah. like, you know, yeah. That's my only issue. So I think we so, got to figure out a way. Yeah. At least we know that that happened. And... So maybe at the next staff meeting, make the point to the different kind of, um, Please keep the poor selectman in the loop on any decisions or requests for decisions that may impact board of selectman and board of health. We meet every week. We got lots of time. We don't mind staying till eleven o'clock talking about this stuff. Yeah, because 
because even chapter, I think it's chapter 36, 11 specifically says mm -hmm. you have to tell them for the health. Sure. You know, very good. And sure. so just, we, just so we know. Yeah, so. yeah. I agree. Okay, now actually the more important thing, um, DEP. Craig, you want to give us an update on this? I mean, there's really no way to sugarcoat this, but, you know, <clears throat> with the, the landfill closure many years ago and then the, the settlement with the homes up there, we were testing 10 homes. Mm -hmm. We all know that they've now the new DEP standards were to test for PFAS, which if a positive hit is taken, it triggers quarterly testing. DEP just came back with a new mandate stating we have 10 additional homes to test for PFAS. Not that have, not that had hits, not that they had hits, but they just had an just, abundance of just caution. Just caution and caution. Yeah. A couple of residents reached mm -hmm. out to the DEP yeah. wanting to know why they're not being tested, yeah. and DEP, DEP accommodated their request. Thanks. So thanks. Now we have 20 homes to test. I had a talk with him too, with Dan Hall, mm -hmm. and what? he called just to say. Uh, I know what this means for the town, but we don't have much choice here. But I know you had talked to safety. Dan a month or so ago yes. when that one resident came in. He yes. didn't give an inkling that this might be a possibility? Um, yes. Well, I mean, they didn't say that we're going to do this, but they said we'll take it under advisement. And uh, we understand. And I think at one point Dan said to Mr. Mahoney, I think his name was, now, I, I understand your, your concerns, mm -hmm. you know, and I kind of expected that, that they were going to tilt over to right. Right, but, residents. Because but, but, he but said, I'm, I'm adjacent, I'm right across the street. He said, why why not me? Moriarty. Yeah. But the Moriarty. potential is that we had to increase our testing budget by 72000 for 10 homes. Yeah. Yeah. They're looking for three more tests in this fiscal year, yeah. which are instead of four. Mm -hmm. So if I do the math, it's 54000 Yeah. I have to say, if we'd had a head up, heads up that this was a potential, this could have been in the special town meeting warrant. Could have been. And now, I don't know where the 50000 is coming from. Well, here's my other concern, John, is we've already contracted with Time Bond to do the preliminary studies for expanding the water district mm -hmm. to the homes on the current map. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have to add 10 more homes, um, the Water Commission is meeting in two weeks to go over their 50% proposal, mm -hmm. you know, their, their plan. If we have to send them back to the drawing board with 10 additional homes, you know, that's going to increase that cost of engineering that's and stuff. That's a good point. So, you know, now that we're knowing that, you know, who knows how that budget's going to look too. And you're the, you know, your board knows, and I, I think you guys have a meeting tomorrow maybe. No, it's in two weeks. Oh, two weeks now? Yeah, John's, John's away. John's right, away. right, right. Um, do you think there's capacity in the system for right. additional homes? Not what? Well, at current capacity? No. Mm -hmm. I don't think so for the 10 additional homes. I don't think so. If we upgrade it, I don't know if it's going to require a third well now. Mm -hmm. You know, because we were basing all around current sizes. Right. And they were thinking, okay, we'll upgrade the pump house, we'll do above ground storage of, mm -hmm. I want to say like 15,000 gallons or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You know, but now if we're increasing it double, pretty much, mm -hmm. you know, is there capacity in the two wells to yeah. draw that gallon per minute? But based on that letter, basically we have a, I don't want to say a drop dead date, but we've been told, okay, your test. In November, you're going to start. So my, my question now is, I mean, project cost for construction of the district expansion, if it's going to go up more <coughs> because of the 10 additional homes and we mm -hmm. have to run more piping, you know, what is, what's our best scenario now? Is, is post pre-filters now better than? Well, I would, looking at the map, it doesn't look like you're adding any more street you're going by all these homes anyhow. We were still going to have to run cost, two homes. Right, but your yeah. cost for the one we just did was how much? It was under 10, right, per, for that connection? Yeah, I think it was like 11 and a half. It went up that much? I think that's what the original price was. I thought it was under 10 because yeah. we didn't go with, uh, what's the name? No, his, the other one, I think the other one was like 13. Uh, so if you're going to say that, okay, these 10, well, there's another 150,000, whatever, to make the connections. But the street was already going by these places because they're already in the district. Right. Yeah, pipes already there. But then it again goes back to well capacity. And I go back to your capacity. Now you put question. a new well in. Right now, now you're into yeah. even more. But going back to your testing thing, if we're going to have this bill for another, I don't know, eighteen thousand per quarter, and we don't have it currently in the but well, okay, we would because we haven't paid for the others. You right. could pay for the third, the November ones because the funds up to one hundred. But in May, we're out. Mm -hmm. Do you say, well, we'll tap ARPA for it, 
but then we don't have money in ARPA for the project. Right. right. You've applied, you've that. applied, and right. you think one of those one stops was turning down the uh, the water district? Possibly. I'm going to have to review check the numbers again tomorrow. Yeah. Check those cross cross check those numbers with the, what I have. In okay, you also mentioned additional infrastructure money possibly coming out as well. Yes, that's what we that, that's the main interest right now. I think given especially with the meeting coming up, uh, I've been on the phone to MBI three times now, mm -hmm. and I guess they are inundated. And they haven't taken my call. So, even though I had an introduction from um, the, the guy that's running this this other organization on broadband, mm -hmm. uh, Chris McClure, you remember, you know Chris. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, you know, I don't have an explanation on that, but I, that, as far as I'm concerned, has to be the major financial. Uh, priority right now. Well, that's the broadband. Especially going I mean, into town meeting, we need to be able to tell them that we we are hopeful. Of, but that's uh, the broadband part. I mean, is there yeah. additional money for the water expansion? John thinks that the the, the uh, opportunity that I shared with him may not work, but um, mm. we have a meeting before the town meeting, so I can. <clears throat> Spend some time on that as well, hmm. and report next Monday. Yeah, which goes back to my question: Is it is it more advantageous to look into testing and filtering as opposed mm -hmm. to expansion at this point? I, I don't know. Do you have to work with? Do you want to work with Time Bond or WJF on yeah, the cost? Yeah, we're going to talk with them in yeah. two weeks, so all well, that's going to come up. <clears throat> That's all the good news. Gosh, do you have any more good news? <laughs> Fresh out. Yeah. That's some board of health permits. Oh, great. Uh, selectman reports. Uh, <coughs> committee tomorrow. Planning committee tomorrow night. Uh, five well, you can't meet here because there's no room. Okay? No, no, we're going to we're going to the IRC. Okay, well, so check out the book. Formerly known as the library. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> I'll bring that book back soon. I promise. Uh, we had the senior center building committee meeting today. Again, we interviewed two firms. It was a good meeting. Thank you to the police station for hosting it because, uh, again, there's not much room at the senior center. And they had the electronic, basically, capability to have it there with Zoom, oh. Zooming and things like that. No coffee, and that was a little disappointment. Hmm. But, uh, Fall Fest this Fall Saturday Fest. at mm -hmm. TWB. Uh, there's a trunk or treat, crafters, fireworks. And uh, Fiber Optic Committee will be there with a presentation or information about the Fiber Optic. Excellent. All right. And you had a couple of permits? Yeah, we have a couple of <coughs> one-day food permits for <coughs> the Fall Fest, October 21st, mm -hmm. uh, noon till 5, one for East Village Tavern, mm -hmm. and one for Fall Festival Committee, uh, Chili, S'mores, Popcorn, and Cider, and Donuts and stuff. And move approval. Second. Oh. All there. All right. Okay. Bring it up here. Pretend the sign. Okay. Well, thanks, Don. Invisible link. Yeah, right. Well, we already signed it. <laughs> we were feeling pretty confident about these two. Uh, Bob, can we do this very quickly, please? You've already covered half the stuff. But yeah, I, I want to point out that the Ambulance Oversight Committee is meeting on Wednesday. We expect to report a 15 month look back mm -hmm. and a true up of uh, what the subsidy is going to be for the town, but it looks like it's going to be handsome. No, so uh, you already have the information on the appeal on Tiger. Mm -hmm. We have two applicants thus far for the uh, health coordinator position and two applicants for the conservation stormwater. Um, I'd like to schedule mm -hmm. interviews with Board of Health people. Um, Next week, if we can, if you can give me some times, uh, awesome. well, we'll, we'll bring. I hate to say it, I'd flip it. I'd like to get that conservation stormwater done right now because I mean, you've been beating that one, and I know. you actually got two people. Jump on it. We have two. Yeah. 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 I was okay. talking to uh, vice vice principal at the PVPC over the weekend, and he was shocked that we hadn't gotten anybody yet. So, well, 
they're coming in. Mm. Um, okay. Um, yeah, we've gone ADA through, we've training, gone through yep, yep. Dan Hall, as I said, I yep. talked to. Need a date for the ADA training. Right, okay. And gaming permission. So the gaming, the sidewalk project, which sidewalk project? The gaming commission was going to fund design for the Main Street sidewalk project contingent on the town getting the 1.3 million in the mm. state transportation bond issue. Okay. Governor has refused to fund part of the transportation bond issue that provided funding for municipalities. Because the state's so low on money. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. look yeah. like that's going to go anywhere. Mm. And I, you know, I think it, it probably uh, lost on the cutting room floor when it came to the billion dollar tax cut. I didn't get any of that either, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Just saying, yeah. No sidewalk, no tax cut. Uh, so we've talked about Fiber Gaming Commission. You have the new growth estimates. Mm -hmm. Also, we have a candidate well, just for a Can we go back to the sidewalk? The sidewalk thing. thing. Yeah. I think what you're saying, though, is because the mitigation fund is going to fund the design. Yes. Since we're not going forward that, we're not getting the money. Yeah. We already have a design for we do. Allen Street. Yes. That will they fund the project because we already have the design. And they said very likely they will. And the actually a copy of that went to uh, Sean Cronin at the DOR. Mm. And he sent me a separate email saying, send the letter by him. So, so yeah. positive outlet possible. I think that yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, it's looking good. Mm. And then lastly, uh, well, we've been through EV charging. Turn it over and you'll see something that I consider important. Uh, the state is mm. uh, forming a new partnership for federal funds. Mm -hmm. And um, I've signed up for this. Okay. Great. So that's it. Cool. All right. All right. Anything from the public, Dad? Okay. okay, Lauren. Nothing. Zoom. Nothing. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Have a good week. <laughs>